It's always good to see you. Uh, you never cease to amaze me on these deals you strike and, and what you've been doing here at AMD since you joined many years ago. Uh, congrats on this news. For investors not familiar with a, precisely what you announced, I'm taking it as OpenAI, AMD are working together to build the future of AI infrastructure. How do you see it? Yeah, well, first of all, Brian, it's great to be here uh, with you. And yes, uh, today is a, a big moment for us, a uh, very exciting deal. You know, when you think about where we are today, um, it is all about AI and how do we use AI to um, you know, really impact every single industry out there. And the foundation of that is you need to have enough AI compute. And so, yes, what we announced today was a six gigawatt deal it will be you know, tens of billions of dollars of revenue uh, to AMD um, over the next uh, few years. Um, and it's really an opportunity for us to even partner deeper uh, with you know, the clear market leader in AI. And so uh, you know, we're, we're talking about building six gigawatts together. Um, you know, the first instantiation will actually go into place uh, the second half of next year. Um, we see it ramping to you know, double digit billions of revenue for us, it's incremental from an AMD standpoint. And most importantly, it actually has us working together on the technology because the technology is just super hard. There's so much we have to do to get it all working. And so bringing you know, the best of OpenAI and AMD together is, is what this deal's all about. Uh, a deal like this, Lisa, it doesn't happen overnight. You don't wake up Sunday thinking, all right, we're gonna announce this on Monday. When did you start working on it? And how, uh, what was it like working with a, with a Sam Altman to, to get this through uh, the finish line? Well, um, the key, Brian, and I've, I've told you this before, the key in our uh, world is it's all about roadmap. It's all about the technology. It's all about ensuring that we're meeting uh, the performance capabilities for the most demanding um, foundational models. And that's what OpenAI has. I mean, they have um, you know, brilliant engineers, their models are used everywhere. And so this has been a process. It's been, you know, several years in the making. Um, it started with them testing our MI300 and doing some early work on MI300. Uh, that moved to MI350. We've done a lot of work on software. And, you know, it's culminating in, you know, they've given us feedback on what they believe best in class is. And MI450, which we have coming next year, is absolutely that. It's best in class, you know, AI computing. And, you know, the fact is um, having a, a team that is, you know, so much at the center of the global AI, AI build out, being super excited to be a lead customer for MI450, I think it's a great thing for us. It'll push us uh, to get the technology out even faster. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been um, a couple, couple of years in the making, but um, we're super excited to be able to talk about, you know, sort of the, the breadth and the depth of uh, this relationship, you know, as it relates to our overall AI capabilities and AI business. Lisa, I'm trying hard to make sure I got all these, these terminologies down correct. So bear with me if I get one wrong. So what would deploying six gigawatts how does that change the future of AI? And what does that mean to the, the average person who's only now starting to come across AI agents on various platforms? Well, uh, Brian, it's a great question. I mean, I think we've all experimented with AI. You know, people, you know, think about ChatGPT and Gemini and asking it questions. Um, but what we're seeing is this is really only the very beginning of people uh, taking AI and using it uh, for um, improving businesses, for improving research, for improving, um, you know, all kinds of capabilities. And what we see is, you know, to get more capability, you need more compute. So the work that we're doing is building the foundation of this AI world. And, you know, what we want is to make sure, like every time you have something that you want to use AI for, there needs to be able to have enough compute on demand. And that's why we're talking about building multiple gigawatts. I mean, it is, you know, once you build out all six gigawatts, I mean, you're talking about millions of GPUs and that millions of GPUs will go s towards every user having, you know, sort of intelligence at their fingertips. How difficult is it to build out this type of infrastructure? It's incredibly difficult. <laughs> Let me say, Brian, it is incredibly difficult. Uh, but we have been working on this for years. And, you know, sort of our technology is really around the chips, about ensuring that, um, you know, we are constantly looking for pushing the envelope um, on sort of the next generation. So we're really excited about our MI450 uh, generation. It has um, two nanometer technology, so the most advanced fabrication uh, capability. It has, you know, rack scale solutions. So we're really putting all 
all of these um, you know, compute elements together. And the way to think about it is it takes a village to build this all. So you know, we are, of course, very you know, proud and focused and dedicated on our piece of it. Uh, but it's us, it's our cloud service partners, um, it's obviously OpenAI and the model users. We all need to come together, you know, plan this infrastructure together, make sure there's enough power in the world. Uh, for all of this AI compute, and once we put it all together, uh, you know, we deliver just you know fantastic capability to the world. Is there enough power? There is not enough, but we are actively building everywhere. I mean, this is you know all about uh, ensuring that there's enough power. Certainly in the United States, I think there has been tremendous focus uh, by this administration of ensuring that you know AI is top of mind, and uh, that's super important. Um, it's ensuring that we have enough manufacturing capacity uh, to do this. It's all of the above. And so I would say that the industry is coming together. I mean, this is one of those points in time where you need every part of the the food chain to come together and say, uh, we want to do this. You know, we want to build fast. We want to build big. And uh, we're all putting our best efforts, um, you know, towards this uh, towards this big vision. So much has happened uh, since I last talked to you, Lisa. I mean, of course, this deal is is very much front and center. We have uh, uh, the U.S. government now has a stake in Intel, which wasn't on my bingo card coming into this year. Uh, some would say these tariffs are causing risks to the AI industry or even the, the tech industry. What do you say to those critics? You know, Brian. I would say that that's probably thinking too small. Um, I mean, you have to really look at, you know, what the power of this technology can do for the world. And if you think about all of the applications that can take advantage of AI and computing, and you know, sort of the the massive investments that will have you know significant returns on the other end, um, it takes time to build all this out. So yes. You know, there are, you know, we are investing heavily. Some might say investing ahead of the curve. I actually say investing um, at the right pace because we want to accelerate. You know, this is a place where when, you know, companies and, and uh, partners make bold moves, um, it will be rewarded because we will do things that you previously thought weren't possible. We're actually bringing uh, the industry ecosystem together so that we're actually you know, getting the best of each of our teams so that we can actually accelerate the rate and pace of um, deployment and, and AI in innovation. So, you know, I really believe that this is the beginning of a, you know, 10 year kind of super cycle and we're very in the very early innings of this. Um, I think Brian, you know, I used to say that uh, I thought the AI TAM just for, you know, silicon accelerators, sort of our piece of the business was going to be, you know, five hundred billion dollars, and some people thought, boy, that was a big number. And and now maybe I've underestimated that number. And we have uh, a lot of clear, um, you know, demand across the world, you know, for this um, infrastructure.